I'm gonna go do some carving. Oh, hey, can you bring back the Valentine decorations? Valentine's decorations? What? Oh, man. Valentine's Day decorations? Is it really that close to Valentine's Day? What am I going to make for Laura? Oh. Let's check Google. Okay, let's see if Google has a teddy bear. How about clip art? Go to clip art library. Valentine's Day teddy bear. Let's see, we just have to pick one out. There we go. Let's grab this one. Okay, let's go ahead and print this one out. Oh, it's a full page. We don't want that size. Let's make it smaller. try 50%. Nope. Let's go 20%. That'll work. When that came up on there, um, it shows up when you select print, you kind of get a print preview and you just kind of be able to gauge the size of what's printing out based on how it sits at the paper. And when this one originally opened up, it was a full page bear and we don't want to do that today so uh, i ended up changing that that going to the print settings and scroll down there's a you can change the scale from default to custom and then i just changed it to 25 percent and that uh, that's going to give us a little bear pattern that's just a, about two inches wide roughly and and uh, just over two inches tall maybe two and a half inches tall so I'm just gonna cut this out and that's gonna be our pattern okay so after you have your pattern cut out we're gonna use this uh, uh, two inches wide by about two and three-eighths tall and it's only about an inch thick ideally I'd like to have this maybe an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half thick but It'll be fine. We'll get we'll get a little bear out of there. What we're gonna do is just trace that on our block. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just getting an outline, rough outline. Now you can just start with a knife and and cut this out. I am I'm gonna go over to the bandsaw and remove this just to make the video a little shorter. Okay, I went ahead and uh, kind of drew some of the details of the bear and the heart on here. Um, the reason for that is uh, to help me understand and see on the three-dimensional way here what needs to be removed. For instance, on the front here, these are his arms are just kind of shown comes around and goes up towards his armpit but really what we want that to do is it kind of wraps around heading up towards his back shoulder so I drew that on there the arm coming around here and then same with the back kind of arched the back up towards the top of the head and then kind of bubbles out here a little bit where he's sitting I just want to like to mark some of those things out um, it helps me keep it in perspective here and then on the bottom you don't have to have this hole in here this is a hole I drill um, it's part of the process I use when I'm recording this so I can make the the little progress 
um, thing that I like to show so that you can see what's going on without my hands being in the way. So that, that that's just for my purposes. You don't need that hole there. But like the center of the heart, I mark that down here and then kind of the where the heart will meet the legs, I'm going to mark that so that basically it tells me I need to remove this part of the wood and remove this part of the wood. And then, you know, there'll be a little bit on the back corners. That's just kind of rounding. And then <clears throat> for the ears, you know, the ears are set back on the head and angled forward just a little bit. I mean, th this is just a, <laughs> a flat picture, but just how you just got to kind of think about how things are. You know, you've seen teddy bears and bears before. You can see how their, their ears sit on their head. Anyway, we just kind of want to map some of that stuff out. And then it's time to get started. Now I'm just going to start using a detail knife on this. It's a pretty small project. And uh, there's really no need for a rough out knife. I just did kind of a rough bandsaw thing one thing to point out too when you're cutting this with the bandsaw there's a temptation to cut in here and follow this profile but the problem with that is that doesn't carry we don't want to carry that all the way through where the heart and the legs come together here we only want that to be about this far back and then the rest is just going to be he's sitting on his butt so we don't want to carry that V shape all the way through, but it's just little things like that to think about. So let's just go ahead and get started. Oh, one more thing I point out this, I mean, this box up here on the, on the front, that's to uh, remind me that I need to not take that part of the face back that sticks out a little bit like it would on a bear or a dog or anything like that. So I'll just get started. Just start, I like to just kind of start taking the corners off of things. Remember, like I said in the other videos, and wood carving, cutting corners is good. We'll mark these ears out a little bit here. Let's make a stop cut on both sides. And as always, make sure your knife is dropped and sharp. Makes a big difference. Especially when you're trying to control these cuts so that you don't, like, put so much force on on there that it finally cuts and you just cut the whole ear off you don't want that so like I said before I'm not necessarily necessarily trying to show you uh, how to make every single cut on every project more so just trying to show you how I do things and you can agree with them or not that's fine comment about it uh, it's just how I do it but anyway the one thing I was going to say is kind of a safety thing. If you get where you're making a cut and you are pushing really, really hard, that's kind of a red flag. Just take a second, think, man, I'm really pushing hard on this knife. And then your next thought should be, what happens if that wood breaks? Where's that knife going to go? Then I have my cut glove on, that kind of thing. But you should never, I mean, it does take some force to push a knife through the wood, but it shouldn't be extremely difficult. If it is, you need to take smaller, thinner pieces and uh, just kind of back off a little bit. You don't have to force your way through it. It just leads to problems, broken pieces of carvings, cut fingers, that kind of thing. Nobody wants that. mark out the thing. Another little tip here, if you're, when you're doing this type of thing where you want to start um, cutting a profile out, don't, don't force your knife tip in there real deep and then expect to just crank it around these corners. That's, that's a perfect way to snap the tip off of a knife, which I've done. And depending on how much of it breaks off, you just have to kind of reshape the knife and bring it back. But if you break off too much, then you're going to have a smaller knife. So I got around the muzzle here. Muzzle? Sure. This kind of... I like to take it a little bit easy when I'm just starting around some of these shapes. 
Here and mark out the bottom of the head. Now with that cut and the side of the nose here, you can just go in and start bringing that down. Just kind of mark things out. Now that we have that kind of reserved, we know that the above that needs to come back quite a ways. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work across the top here. Probably break a chunk off and that's fine. I just like to think of it as just taking your time to uh, mark out the features. Once they're a little more established, maybe get a little more aggressive, you can, you will know more about how the wood grain is in this particular piece of wood. And you'll have a little bit more of your features defined so that it helps stop your knife where it needs to be stopped. Things like that. Bring this top of the head back, the front. You can see, as I mentioned before, you, you don't want to have a whole bunch of force. As I'm coming across there, it started cutting a little harder. But if I would have just kept putting more and more and more force on there, a real good chance that I get about here and then a big chunk's going to break off. I got my thumb guard on, it wouldn't have hurt me, but it would have not been desirable for what we're doing. So as I was coming across there, started slicing the knife like this. That just helps cut it, a lot less force. Less force means safer. Just take your time. As bare, or at least part of it, the heart, will be red, but we don't want to paint it red with blood because we, we're in a hurry. Up here we need to round the face back and now that we have the ears defined we can and be a little more aggressive there. Sometimes I like to uh, just have a general idea about what I want to carve. Just pick up a piece of wood and start making what I'm thinking about. Other times, if there's something specific, or I want, and I'm learning now that I want to make videos about it, sometimes it's I start with uh, some kind of template or image or at least something to go by kind of helps keep me on track but you don't always have to do that either around the top of the shoulders towards the head back here i do that on both sides like i said earlier this ideally i probably should have started with a little thicker piece of wood it, it would have been possible to make a little bit more of a rounded chunkier bear but this will be fine it will be a bear it will look like a bear seeing these saw marks on the back of here kind of makes me think i want to leave them it almost looks like bear hair again remember not don't just try to brute force pull that through there make some slices shaving think of shaving it off of there if it cuts easy and smooth that's fine you can you don't have to make the slicing cuts but if it starts to fight back a little bit just be careful one thing I did a little bit wrong back here which is not really wrong it's just not finished yet one thing to think about is I like to have the back of the ears kind of just merge nice into it at an angle at the back of the head and here I have it cut in too far which is no big deal I'm just gonna come back here And we'll take care of it like that. And just continue to uh, make a nice round shape for the head. And we don't have this back far enough because our, our uh, snout, muzzle, nose, that part of the bear isn't sticking out very far yet. We'll just make our cut a little bit deeper. Going around these tight corners can't stick that knife blade in there real far and twist it, it'll break it off. I'll just kind of work that back. Okay, now 
<laughs> kind of looks like he's sitting there with his shoulders forward all scrunched up. We need to start working on that. So let's, this bow tie obviously isn't going to be out at the end of his nose. Um, but as we work down through, uh, go ahead and mark that out and just bring it down. And then as you get closer, you can just shave the top off. But the profile will be there and it'll be preserved for when you get down a little closer. So these deep, these cuts can be pretty deep. The straight cuts. I didn't go far enough. Push the knife down in there. What I like to do is go at an angle, get your point to your knife where you're starting, push it down in there, then kind of tip your knife up so that the cutting part of the blade is straight, then bring it back carefully and slowly to where you want to stop. I'll give you a nice straight cut in, down, and to the back edge. So that's marked out. Now we can uh, start rounding these corners. I'm going to go ahead and just start marking out this heart over to his arm. And we'll skip over where his hand, arm, foot, paw is on top of the heart. Bring that down. Come up on this side and you can stop right where his paw is. Okay, that's kind of marked. Just kind of do little outlines here on all these parts. Remember, we're just going to work, think of it as taking layers off, working down through there, and you just mark out these feet. And it's pretty well marked out. Now we can just kind of start taking the shoulder down, have your knife come close to where where this cut is. You don't want to go through it and end up with a bunch of jagged cuts on the side of the bow tie. We'll just round it like that. As we come down from the top, just keep thinking the, you know, the head turns and curves in, so that's kind of how we want to direct our cut there. Up and curve into the neck. I just thought it'd be fun to... I, I haven't really carved much for Valentine's gifts or things to have sitting around. I'm not sure why. Once we get down a little deeper into into the front of this, we're going to use uh, some a couple gouges just to help clean up around in there. You can do a pretty decent job with just a knife, but I've got these really nice gouges sitting here in front of me gonna use them but like if you're just starting out you don't have all you have is a knife you can uh, you can get her cleaned out with that as well it just takes a little bit more of flip flopping around and using the tip of your knife and being patient come up to the bottom of the bow tie here oh, took some of it off but that's okay there's a lot there to it's gonna have to be removed anyway We wouldn't have to start worrying about that feature just yet, but I like to get them marked out when I'm thinking about it. And I think we still have plenty of width up here. Just kind of my way of doing things. I like to bounce around a little bit on the carving. Come down here and I'll take some of this out. And you just got to keep thinking about three-dimensionally, I guess, what, what uh, sticks out furthest sticks out the most and on here these feet are going to stick out a little bit more than the heart and the the top legs are going to be in a little bit from the bottom ones so we just got to kind of stagger that all in there So we want to take back, kind of made a curved line here right in front of this hole. It's kind of where I'm going to bring it back out. There we go. And I'm going across the end grain down here. Okay, might as well round these, I don't know, maybe I need to brush up on my bare anatomy. Butt cheeks, leg, hips, I don't know, what are they? Does Bear even have butt cheeks? I don't know. I'm going to curve them around a little bit back here. 
Okay, I like how that's kind of rounded up. We'll take a little more out underneath this ear over here. Okay. I like it, I like it. Need a little more muzzle. Slash nose. Slash snout. When you're cutting in next to your stop cuts like this, if you're not cutting directly up to it, you know, just kind of envision where the tip of your knife is and get close to, but don't cut through where your stop cut is. That'll keep a nice clean edge on the side here. Okay. Take a layer off of this bow tie and bring it down. Come back up to it. Clean it up. And we'll start bringing our heart out a little bit too. So we kind of want a, a round end here on the end of its teddy bear arm, paw, foot, leg. This is going to kind of cut it in at angle just to round that edge. Make it a little more pronounced. It's an area where probably won't take much more off the end of that, but a uh, pencil. So I will have this uh, circular end paw and then it'll come back like this and be an armpit back in there and this will curve up. So we can start defining that a little bit too up here come down and that's going to end up getting cut back quite a bit in there. You think teddy bear, think everything's rounded and smooth don't break your knife. Now you can see how we're starting to have this arm up here. So we'll have to remove that. And since I went around this at an angle, it looks like we cut into the heart and he's not touching it. So that will all get rounded back as well and end up looking like it's his arm paw mitt end of rounded teddy bear hand arm foot will be laying on top of the heart. And kind of do the same over here. I'm going to define the top of the arm. Then I come up here and I'm going to keep my, try to keep my knife at an angle just to help with making that a rounded edge. I'm just working on bringing those, the front of the shoulders back so we can have our arms protruding out. What else we got? We have down here. We haven't done much with. Let's take a couple pieces off of there. These bottom legs, paws, arms, foot, feet. Uh, we want to, from where his foot is, we kind of want to go back, back at an angle and we're going to have, make this heart kind of 3D shape so it kind of comes out. We'll start bringing the just top corner back. Once in a while it's good to pick up, like if you're if you are using uh, something to reference, good to pick that up and just give it a close look. And uh, I think we're kind of on track anyway for what what we got going on there. Um, let's round these back corners a little bit more. We don't want to round this bottom edge too much because I want it so it will sit nice. However, round the sides a little bit more. You can see I took off some pretty major pieces there. Just mostly due to the, the grain. But that's okay. I wanted to take off a bunch, so it works out. As I'm pushing my knife in there, I'm, I'm kind of rolling it at the same time to create a curved edge. I kind of have a pencil line there, but it doesn't mean I have to follow it, does it? Did I just break a rule or something? I don't know. Are there any rules? 
Yes, there are. Don't get hurt. I, I pushed a little harder and made the, the stop cut a little deeper in the middle. I'll kind of bring that out some more. And on this side of the arm, the top side. Now we don't want to go too close to the shoulder. We want to kind of have that merge together as it gets closer, but we do need to take a little more out. We'll just kind of up in there a little bit. We'll have to cut the top of the heart here. Kind of make a, it's not a very nice triangle, but it is kind of a triangle cut out of there. As you can see, to uh, work around this bow tie, things like that, we're going to, I mean, you can continue on like we are. Just make stop cuts and, you know, just working with the point of your knife and you can get it down in there and you can get it pretty flat. Um, but I do have these gouges here. I'm going to go ahead and use those in a second here. I'm going to do the same thing we did on the other side. and make a awkward, might have went a little too deep there to get the it all the way out. It's pretty deep. We'll take some of it out first and we can see what's going on. Just kind of missed the corner of the bow tie. There. Just I just wanted to kind of start the getting the, the arm shaped back in there is all. And we got to do the outside of this arm. Anytime you're doing, like you're doing a stop cut, keep in mind, like this arm will be rounded. So we don't want to start, if we start with our knife angled like this, well, it's going to, you round that over, it's going to make this a lot smaller. If you want to, if you're getting close to the size you want to have, and you go, you're going to round it this way, you know, make your stop cut a little bit of an angle there to, to round over. Pull the shoulder back, round it over. I think it's about time to strap this knife. You can kind of tell it starts dragging a little bit more. So if you don't want to just keep going and going and going with the knife, you, you want to maintain that sharp edge. I'm fortunate enough to have three just like this, so I'm just going to set this one aside to be strapped, and then we'll pick up the next one in line here just to keep things moving okay now this side's been rounded this one this side not as much so we'll take some pretty good chunks off of there kind of bring that around something like that and we can kind of just round round and smooth round and smooth again just not doing too much rounding on the bottom okay we need to Go bring this from the foot, kind of go back in just a little bit. Um, actually, I'm going to kind of take some off this outside corner. Like the, the legs are out at an angle. So the if your leg's like this, your foot's not going to be like this. Especially if you're a, you know, a, a teddy bear holding a, a heart and you're carved out of wood. Then you definitely wouldn't have your foot pointed that way. Just saying. Okay, we'll kind of misshape in a little bit. Go around these sharp edges here. So now I'm just trying to, like I said, push the push the leg back a little bit here. Uh, we'll have the heart coming up against it. I should be making contact with it right there somewhere. And a little separation there now. Same as we did on that side. We'll angle this foot back a little bit like that. And then we need to round these edges here. Okay, just for um change of pace I'm going to switch to uh, some gouges here and just try to remove some of this inside here now this is this is one of my Drake palm gouges and it's a number eight and I think I can't remember if they say that's a quarter inch wide I don't remember it's been a while since I bought them but still a little tight for this one I think we're gonna go smaller 
Go down to this. Uh, I believe this is also a number eight, but it's a small size. I don't remember their sizes. Just kind of go around the top edge of the heart here, and up into that elbow or armpit. Carefully clean out around the bow tie. It's just easier to do it with this than to, with the point of a knife to get down into these little spots and efficiently remove some of that wood. We can come clean up the edges with the knife here in a little bit. There. I think I like how that one that part is pushed back. Let's do the same, just center of this heart and up inside under the bow tie. Just like with a knife, if, if you're using a gouge and you start to, you run into resistance, you know, just kind of hold steady pressure, but don't just keep pushing harder. Shouldn't have to. Just maybe rock it back and forth a little bit, give it a chance to get cutting edge to cut, and it'll go through there. Okay. It's also, I, I like, I think I mentioned this in a different video too. I like, kind of like that rocking it back and forth. You don't have to push as hard, but it all what that allows then is to have more control. Especially when you're working around these tight little spots. You don't want to break off something. And it's nice to have that control rather than just brute force. Clean up this neck and body line here just a little bit. A little deeper right here on top of the heart under the bow tie. When you're doing this in these small areas too, you'll have, you know, you'll make a groove with this tool. You just come back and it takes a little focus, but you can kind of keep that the next pass right on that ridge that's left behind and you can get it pretty smooth in there. Get that cleaned up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take the bow tie back. It's still out too far. But like I said, we've just been kind of bringing that down as we go. Carefully cut, make a stop cut here under the nose muzzle snout beak. Oh, not a beak. Oh, maybe a beak. Really got to work on that bear anatomy. Okay, let's kind of clean it up. For whatever reason, this this just looks like a, a messy carving to me right now. But we'll clean it up. We'll get there. Uh, keep going a little more with the bow tie. A pencil here. Center of the bow tie. has got that little round knot. And I think I want to... Sharpen this corner up here a little bit. The top edge is going to be right up under his chin. But down here, we want to define that really well. Take that little chip out of there. There we go. I still think that's going to have to come back a little more. It's still sticking out too far. Well, that happens. See that? We got his snout on my finger. Snout and bow tie. All right. What do you do? Do you start over? No. You don't have to start over. Where's my snout? Okay. What I'm going to do first here is remove this piece that I was trying to remove when I took the whole thing off. Yeah, we do want to put that back on. Because I don't think I have enough room here to take the rest of it back. So... As long as we're here though, let's let's take a little more off here. Well, that's not in our way. Okay. Okay. Time for a little bear surgery. 
So I have this, uh, it's actually a foam safe kicker. It's, it's essentially just an accelerator for safe, or, uh, it's an accelerator for super glue, a CA glue. So I'm going to take that and uh, just kind of soak up where his nose goes. And then with my other hand here, I got some gel super glue put on the back here and uh, I'm just going to set that right down in place like that squeeze it on there and there you go we are snout people again bear snout nose thing good to go just like new almost we'll give that just a little bit then we'll come back and uh, get after it again give it a little bit to set up now that we've uh come back from that catastrophe cutting the nose off well we're just going to leave that alone a little bit longer hasn't been very long since i glued that on there uh, let's see what else can we do on this guy well we got to clean this up a little bit here his foot where i'd kind of made the stop cut and then i haven't been coming up to it so it's got a line there which will just take a little more off here yeah let's use uh this gouge kind of clean that up in there we want this heart to maybe taper down a little bit more on the front and then maybe end up being like this thick here kind of go back up in there so something like that so we want to remove that piece in there we'll go ahead and make a cut along that line like that now you won't have this hole to contend with here again that's just something I do so that I can create these progress windows for you. I was trying to care for, there we got it. <laughs> I didn't want to let go for a second. Maybe I'm a little gun shy after breaking his face off. Define the edge of the heart up here a little bit. Um, you can struggle along like I was there, try to get these narrow deep cuts done with your knife it's it's doable it's not always a real clean adventure stick with it you can get it but i'm just going to use this okay i'm going to get a little more i think that's pretty good we'll clean that up just a little bit when we come around i always like to at the end, just kind of go around and do a fine little cleanup adjustment type things. To me, that's one of the relaxing parts of carving is when you're you've done done the work of getting it all shaped and everything, and you're happy with where it's going, and then you can just kind of sit back and admire your handiwork and take a little sharp knife and clean up here and there and you can do that as much or as little as you like around the edges of the heart here we're getting almost to that point where do a lot of little cleanup and you don't want to pry but if you get down in these deep v's make a nice clean cut there Tip your knife as far as you can, make it clean cut, and you just kind of kind of hold that chip with your knife and drag it out. But you, you should never be in there prying. It's a good way to break your knife around this front paw foot nub. A little bit. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm going to give you a round this a little bit. This, Like I said, we're at the point now 
basically have the majority of this complete. I'm just going to keep going around looking for little things here and there that could clean up or improve where this armpit comes up here. Actually, I take the gouge and clean that up a little bit. Oh, that one's too. I keep grabbing that one, but it's not small enough. Okay. Hey, okay, now we need to take another pass at this bow tie. Clean up the edges real careful. And apparently, by careful, I mean just stab it in the middle anywhere. I'm going to come up to that. We're going to use the gouge. We already have the stop cut there. The back edge of this heart a little bit more. It's kind of running together right now. Come up here. Just kind of carefully. Get the knife down to the point. Flip it over and do the same thing here. Start at the arm. There. Now we can... Come down to that a little bit. I know a lot of room to work in there with the knife. This gives it a little separation so we can want a little bit of a definition over here at the arms also. And then we got kind of a hard edge right here at the top we want to smooth out. Okay, I did a little more cleanup off camera. Just went around, touched up little corners and things like that. There's just a couple more things I want to show on here. We need to kind of scoop out the inside of his ears a little bit. Next thing we're going to do, put a little detail on the snout, nose, muzzle, beak. And I'm going to have this the front part of this, going to kind of come down. It's going to be the tip of the nose, so we're going to cut that line in, make a little separation there in detail, and then we're going to come down and uh, give them kind of a little smile looking thing like that <clears throat> and these aren't real deep cuts I just uh, take your time I'm gonna do half each direction with the knife angled a little bit down okay we just uh, made our cut here to mark underside of the nose and we'll just come up here and just make real thin careful cuts up to that doesn't take much really just kind of causing a, creating a line here where uh, when we paint it the paint will kind of stop there and might create a little bit of a shadow even bring that up the sides just a little bit okay now I'll just do the same thing on this the vertical part of this I'm gonna kind of make a I'm gonna do one side here the knife angled and just carefully bring it around on this one this time to go the other way we want to come over here so we're we're starting a V cut the top and then when we get to the bottom we're also these these all just be little V cuts and again it's just to kind of indicate the lips or the edge of the mouth do bears have lips man I really need to work on this bear anatomy. Well, I'm going to say this bear sort of has lips. Okay, now come over here. Make our little V cut using just the point of the knife. 
uh, might not show up really well. Extra little light I have on my camera died, so but I just wanted to finish this up. Okay, there we go. Now, three things left, three steps. Let's give them some eyes. I'll just come in here and I think um, on our little picture we started with, they're mostly round but kind of a little bit taller than round. So I kind of like that idea. You can make whatever you want. I'm just going to kind of do an oval. And maybe right here. It's kind of looking off to the side here. Try to try real hard to keep them the same. Something like that. Now for these, um, again, just have a add a little bit of depth to it and to have a place for the paint to stop. I'm just going to make, um, start on the line and kind of angle from the outside in. Essentially we'll just kind of put a V cut in here. You just got to take your time because you don't want to, at this point, you've got all this time involved in this project. You don't want to cut all the way across his face or something. Not using a ton of pressure, just kind of cutting in that line. And here is nose, beak, snout, mouth. Kind of getting in our way a little bit there, but okay. Now we kind of have them cut marked out. We'll just come in here at an angle and just cut the very edge of that off and angled back towards the center of the eye and we'll do that as evenly as we can all the way around. I'm going slow because I just find that's just safer. Safer to not slip. Okay, now we'll do this eye. We'll paint the eyes in there, but this just kind of, the paint will stop right in that groove nice, make a nice line. And get the top here. We'll just take a little bit more off of here to get rid of our pencil line. Said we had three things left. Did the nose and mouth. We did some eyes. I think I started, counted, started counting after we did the mouth. So, three things left. Like I said, <laughs> we did eyes. We need to do the inside of the ears, and then I want to put some lettering down here. So let's take our little gouge. Uh, this isn't the one we were using before. This is a number 11. Oh no, this is the number 8. Small number 8. And just come in here. I'm in from the edge a little bit. And just kind of scoop some of that. Okay, I had to got interrupted there with a phone call and uh just before the phone call i was going to show you how um, i use this little gouge to to hollow out the inside of the ears well i got the phone call i turned off the camera and then just kind of kept working on these ears without you so anyway <laughs> they're pretty much done all I do is take this little gouge and just carefully, you can't, you don't want to do too much prying. You'll just, it would just break the the ears. I have these brought down pretty thin. You just kind of carefully push and cut and scoop and uh, just kind of hollow them out a little bit. So that's all there is to that now. So that was our two of our three things I wanted to do yet. So the eyes, the ears, and then the last thing... I've got a little sliver here I want to clean off before we do this part. Okay, the last thing is I'm going to put some letterings on here. We'll say love you or something on the... There, we don't have a lot of room. Uh, and I like to use my, my little gouge for the letters. But pro tip here. I don't know, I don't know why I keep saying pro tip. But... <laughs> 
there's uh if you draw them out well just do something like this make the u come down like that and then we'll do a v something like that and then we'll put a little bit bigger u right here okay now before i use the gouge i want to go ahead and and uh, cut on these lines and that will uh, just help keep everything kind of in control and crisp here as we do this. Try to do just an even depth. It doesn't have to be real deep. And just, just to make this a little more efficient, I'm just going to try to do the vertical stuff here. Bring that all down. Kind of curved on that one. you got to be careful when you get to the edge edges here. Just be very controlled. Okay, now do some of these horizontal ones, just kind of punching in the ends here. Again, I think I said this before, when you're doing this, start, put the point of your knife on the far side and go down and then kind of rock it in there like that. Should give a nice square cut. And then we'll uh, come around the curved parts here. Like I said, this is just going to help. All this kind of come out clean, should come out clean when we do this. Okay, what would you have to do the, did we do the inside of the V? I don't think we did. Now will take our gouge, and again, just carefully, in a very controlled way, gonna come in there. You'll kind of feel right away the depth it needs to be able to get the edges to come out clean. If you try to go too deep, you'll be cutting past where you cut with the knife, and it, there's a lot better chance at that point that you'll kind of lose control of it and end up turning, would turn this V into a Y or something like that. We don't want to do that. You'll just feel it kind of pop when you first put the gouge in there. And that will tell you you have the right depth and everything. That one got kind of got away from me there, but it'll be okay. Clean it up a little bit. Okay, I think we got enough depth on there. A few little remaining pencil lines. We'll just clean that up with an eraser. All right, nice little Valentine bear. Um, we'll move on to painting here in a minute. I just kind of wanted to just again say that you know you don't have to have a special wood carving pattern or anything like that we just simply went online to a free clip art library found a little bear we liked cut that out and that was our starting point and from there you just you just take it to i don't know, you just reference the things you know to be true i guess what does a bear look like? What does a teddy bear look like? What's a teddy bear holding the heart look like? And you just go for it. And take little tiny cuts. Take your time. There you have it. All right. Let's look at uh, getting this guy painted. Okay, I'm getting ready to put some paint on our little Valentine's bear. And I'm just doing a final little check of any little things I want to clean up and I think I'm pretty happy with where it's at um, so let's go ahead and and uh, put some oil on there first thing I always do is oil it helps the paint kind of be more evenly soaked in and everything uh, I use this circa 1850 Terra Nova nature oil nature oil Natural, natural oil, natural na nature. Well, it says it right there. Anyway, um, I use that, and just get some on the brush. Just liberally apply it everywhere, and uh, feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any other what you guys like to do for a Valentine's Day carving project. If if you've been carving a while, and uh, well, even if you're not haven't been carving, what well, maybe you have a something you'd really like to carve just let me know maybe we can uh make something else too i try not to do i would rather do projects that 
other people just haven't done over and over again just to show something different and and um not to try to copy or compare and things like that. I'd rather just kind of do my own thing. And this is something that I guess I haven't really seen this exactly being carved. So started with that. But let me know if there's something else you'd like to see me make for Valentine's Day or otherwise. Okay, that's pretty well soaked up. Zoom down in there. We'll just let that sit for a while, and uh, I'll be back in a little bit after that. Had, that's had a chance to soak in, and then we'll put some paint on. Okay, let's get some paint on this little guy. I'm going to start with uh, just a little bit of white and fill in those letters. doesn't take much. I'm just going to use, uh, a lot of times, and you've heard me say this before, is I will uh, thin down paint because I like to see, like to have it go on more like stain and that is true I still do that there's a few places where I like to use solid colors like if I want to paint the whites of an, <clears throat> of eyes or um, in this case the lettering on this heart something I want just to be kind of solid color that's what i'll do the rest of it the reason behind uh not doing that thinning it down with paint thinning the paint so the reason i normally thin the paint down with water is so that goes on kind of like a stain and it and it will maintain the look of uh you can tell that it's a wood carving and not just something that was 3d printed or something be able to see the wood grain through it let's see how steady i can be on these letters not too bad so far i shouldn't have said that i don't consider myself an expert painter but i try and i can tell you some of you have probably already watched several of his videos but i'm i'm really a big fan of how doug linker does his painting he's really good at that so if you want to learn how to paint, you could check out his videos on painting. If you want to just see me goof around and paint and trying to get it done, you can watch this. I'll leave that alone. Okay, we are going to do one other solid color on here for his eyes. We're just going to take a little dot of black. Actually, I don't think I'm going to put it on the thing. I'm just going to open the lid after shaking it, and we should be able to find some black in there. Little tiny eyes. I'm going to push that all the way out to the carved line. We'll come back later and uh, just put a little touch of white up in the corner or something of those. Now we're going to take some pink. We'll just kind of, we'll do a solid color there too. We'll just put a little bit in the ears. Basically I'm trying to... Uh, kind of create this look here this little pink in the ears there we go something like that next let's get out my tool here this is just a piece of dowel I put a screw in the end and just use that to kind of help hold these things while i paint now this already has a hole in there from my uh, progress recording Let's go ahead and do the main color and uh, we'll just try to do, we're not going to worry too much about matching it exactly, but we we'll want to do the brown color for the teddy bear. You got this, it's called uh, Snut, and we'll go ahead and mix a little water with that. Very precise amount. Nope. Okay, this brush might be a little scary for doing that. Let's grab something different with this guy. I'm going to get that water in the paint mixed up here okay we'll start kind of in the middle of the back here and just get it put on there again i i uh, normally I cut all the saw marks off with my carvings this had a, a kind of a neat saw mark pattern on the back and it made me think of bear hair so i just left it on the back 
because why not? This uh, hole I have in here for recording, where I put it when I record the progress stuff, it's a little too big for this screw. Kind of starting to look teddy bearish. Just want to be a little careful when we get here, come up against the heart. Okay, now that I got the brown on there, uh, I realized I forgot to make his nose black. And we're going to try to get a little bit of black in there where his lips are. And that is not going so well. It's a little bit much. We're going to let that dry, and then we're going to adjust that with our knife. But we do need to put some on his nose here. Okay. Like I said, I'm not happy with that, the way the mouth looks. We're going to correct that with our knife here in a little bit. But, while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and paint the the uh, his bow tie. For that, I'm going to use this country red. I think it's just a little darker, darker red than uh, what I'm going to use for the heart. Okay, well, let's go ahead and... and uh, Paint the heart. That I'm going to use real red. Nothing, that, none of that fake stuff. No, actually, it's called real red. I want to mix up some water with that. It's still plenty thick. Put a little more water in that. And that brown does look a little dark, but I think I think it will soak in a little more too before it's all done. I'm be okay with that, I guess. All right, let's see how this red goes on here. Even though I put quite a bit of water with that one, it's still pretty solid. But it will soak in and I think you'll still be able to see, tell that it's wood. Oh, I think i just going to have to touch that up now. Not gonna lie, painting this little bear is kind of stressing me out. Take a tiny little bit on my tip of the brush, get up in that corner. And it's probably not a place somebody's going to look very often, but we better paint up underneath the back of the heart here, too. Well, there we have it. I see a couple little things I want to touch up. Put a little drop of black out here. And a drop of white. Okay. I'll do... Just looking at the eyes here, didn't quite get all of this one. Well, there you have it, guys. I uh, did a couple little more touch-up things. I put the, the required white dots in his eyes. And uh, pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, and just, again, wanted to have uh, do a Valentine project here that's coming up on us and i also wanted to just show you that um, it's pretty easy just to go out and grab something to make for a pattern um, but anyway i just wanted to show you my take on on uh, a valentine's project i haven't seen this specific thing done very much so i hope you enjoyed that and also just a reminder you don't have to have a specific wood carving pattern just grab an image somewhere off of the internet or a book or a magazine or something or draw it yourself uh, just come up with a you don't need a 3d thing you just take that image and trace it out onto a piece of wood grab your knife and go after it does it look exactly like that nope and that's fine all right thanks for watching